In section 4.2, we are looking at double integrals over general regions. So double integrals over non-rectangular regions also use iterated integrals like we saw in section 14.1, but the order of integration is going to be more critical here. So I want to get started by introducing the two most common categories for non-rectangular regions. So in case one, we want to consider a region bounded by a continuous function of x. So here we're going to suppose that y is equal to g of x and y equals h of x such that x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. And we have a graphical illustration of this potential bounded region. So a couple things that we want to note immediately is that this region is bounded by continuous functions of x. So your bounds on y are functions. So we can say that our y bounds are functions or contain functions. Both bounds could be a function, one bound could be a function, but we know that these bounds are containing variables. And we can also see that the bounds on x are constant. So since we're looking for the volume of a region here, or the area of a region here, we are looking for a numerical answer. So we want to make sure that we integrate with respect to the variable that has functions in its bounds. And then we integrate with respect, our outer integral will be with respect to the variable who has constant bounds. So in other words, we're going to use the order dy dx. So to go ahead and set up a double integral for this region, we use a similar method to that of solids of revolution that we see in Calc 2. So in step one, we want to determine the area of this cross section. So since we want to use the order dy dx, we're going to use a cross section that is parallel to your y-axis. And what this does is it helps us to identify what's the top curve and what's the bottom curve. So it allows us to see that our area, a of x, is going to be the integral from the bottom curve, g of x, to the top curve, h of x, of our function f of x, y. And here we're integrating with respect to y. And this is such that, from our cross-section, we know that y is going to be greater than or equal to g of x, less than or equal to h of x. So drawing a cross-section like we did here on our graph is important because it can help us to identify if we're going to need multiple double integrals to find the area or to find the volume. So in step two, we are now ready to determine the volume of this region by integrating over the area. So our volume is going to be the outer integral, which is from a to b of a of x dx. And plugging in what we found in step one, this is now the double integral from a to b, the inner integral g of x to h of x of f of x y dy dx. And again, so what we're observing here, this is such that our region R, what we have is shaded above, this is set up all points x, y, such that y is greater than or equal to g of x, less than or equal to h of x, and x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So rule of thumb here, anytime you're trying to set up a double integral over a general region, integrate with respect to the variable who has functions or variables in its bounds, leaving the constants for the outer bounds. So let's now go ahead and think about the alternative case. So in case two, we are considering a region bounded by continuous functions of y. So suppose that x is equal to g of y, and x is equal to h of y are continuous functions of y such that y is greater than or equal to c, less than or equal to d. And we have a, another illustration here of a potential bounded region. 
So we want to, again, note, just like in case one, we can find or set up the volume integral here for this non-rectangular region in two steps. So step one, we want to determine the area of the cross section. And let's start here by attempting to integrate this using the same technique we did in case one. So if I come up to the graph here and I draw my cross section right over here for some arbitrary x, we'll call this x naught, we can see in this case that our upper bound or the top curve is going to be g of y and then the bottom curve would be where y is equal to c. However, if we were to put this cross section over here, say x sub 1, we can see that in this case, the top curve changes. The bottom curve is still remaining that constant y equals c, but the top curve is now h of y. So if we were to integrate using the order dy dx, we would end up having to do the sum of two double integrals, which is doable, but a double integral on its own is long enough as it is. Imagine I would take the sum of two. So we want to try to avoid this. So instead of using a cross section for x, we want to take a cross section parallel to the x-axis. So in other words, for a y value. So looking up here at our graphs, I'm going to say let's just choose some arbitrary y value here in between c and d. And in this case, no matter where you put this cross section, you're always going to have that h of y is the right-hand side curve. And that g of y is always going to be the left-hand side curve. So we can even conclude here that g of y is less than or equal to x which is less than or equal to h of y, and that y is greater than or equal to c, less than or equal to d. So we can see that the bounds of x contain functions, whereas the bounds of y are constant, so this implies to us that we want to use the order dx dy. So we are now ready to go ahead and define that cross section. We can say that a of y is equal to the integral from g of y to h of y of our function f of x, y, dx. So in step two, we're now ready to find the volume, and we determine the volume of this region by integrating our area that we defined in step one. So we can say that our volume here is going to be the integral from c to d of the area function in terms of y, dy. And then plugging in that area integral we found up above in step one, we now have, or we can now see that the outer integral is from c to d. The inner integral is from g of y to h of y, f of x, y dx dy. And again here we want to keep in mind that this is where our region of integration is that region R that we shaded that's shaded in yellow above. And it's the set of all ordered pairs xy such that x is greater than or equal to g of y, less than or equal to h of y, and y is greater than or equal to c less than or equal to d. So again, just like in case one, whenever you're finding or evaluating a non-rectangular region, you always want to integrate with respect to the variable where we have functions in the bounds, keeping those constant bounds on the outside. So let's look at some examples.